Hi students and welcome back to Computer Practice with Mr. H and today we're going to do financial calculations. This question paper is coming out of the um, question paper of 9 September 2020 and we're going to focus on question 12 today which is the, um, the formulas or the questions for the financial calculations. And we're going to have to work out the travel expenses quotations for two people. Now, first of all, our first formula specifies that we have to go and calculate the airfare quotation. The airfare quotation is this column over here. And the quote is for one ticket, airplane ticket, it's going to cost of the person 7,687.50 cents they're going to be taxed on that and we want to go and work out what is the total so it's this amount plus that amount will give me my total so that is just a normal sum so equal sum you can use in this formula where you just click on equal sum and you select both of sorry you select both of these two cells let me just do that again so it's equals sum open bracket you select both of these two cells you close your bracket and you press enter alternatively you could also use equals this amount plus that amount and you press enter it's going to be give you the same answer next question is formula b go and calculate the total price display your answer as currency with two decimals so this time around if it's going to cost this amount for one person how much is it going to cost for two people? We want to determine what is the total price. So it is equals this amount multiply by two people. But you need to lock in the two people. This becomes an absolute value. You have to use absolute cell referencing. So what you're going to do is you're going to use F4 to lock in the two people. And you're going to press enter. And then you're going to copy the formula down. All right. Let's copy it down properly. There we go. Now, what would have happened if I did not use absolute cell referencing? Let me show you. If you forget to use absolute cell referencing, this is what's going to happen. Equals this amount multiplied by the two. And if you don't use absolute cell referencing, the moment that you want to copy the formula down, you're going to get a hash value. So in an exam situation, as soon as you get a hash value, students, you need to immediately realize that you need to go and apply your absolute value or your absolute reference. So please don't forget to do that. It equals this amount multiplied by the number of people and apply absolute cell referencing, press enter and copy the formula. There we go. Next question. C. Go and calculate the flight duration. Format your answer to display hours, minutes, and seconds. That's very important. All right, you have to go and format your answer. So here we need to go and work out the flight duration. How long is it going to take someone to fly from Johannesburg to Hong Kong, for example? The departure date is on the 24th of August at 20 past 10 in the evening. And the arrival date is the next day, the 25th of August at quarter past four. Now, first of all, I would suggest you go and select your contents or your cells where you're going to work out your answer. You're going to have to go to click on number. You can also right click and go to format cells, which is where we are now. So you can either click there or you can right click on top of your your highlighted cells or selected cells and you can go directly to format cells then make sure that you go under number select time because it's a time calculation not a date calculation and select hour minute and seconds but just to be a hundred percent sure click on customize and go down the list until you find something that specifies hour, minutes, and seconds. Once you have found it, you can click OK. So you have prepared your cells now. 
So when you do the formula, it is just you want to know how many hours is this flight going to be. So click on your arrival date minus your departure date. All right. Latest date minus earliest date. Press enter. Copy the formula. So the first flight is going to be 17 hours long and 55 minutes and 0 seconds. And the second flight is going to be 19 hours long, 0 minutes and 0 seconds. All right. Moving on. Now we're going to go to the to formula D. The flight ticket, loan amount, copy the value that is in C10 to sales A18 to A20. What that means is the following. Here we have C10. This 29,000 over here, we need to copy to sales A18, 19 and 20. So how do we do that? You click on you you click in the cell where you want to copy it to you're gonna click on equals you're gonna tell Excel listen yeah I want something to happen what do you want to happen I want the cell you see C10 appears but it's important that you lock it in press F4 on your keyboard to lock in C10 and then you press enter and then you can just copy that locked cell down to the other cells all right it's important that it's important that you use absolute cell reference over here if you do not use an absolute cell reference this is what's going to happen equals c10 and if you don't use f4 you just press enter and when you want to copy the formula down you're going to realize that there's something happening it doesn't want to copy the rest because it doesn't recognize it can't find the the copy for you so what you need to do is you need to Please use an absolute cell reference to lock in the cell. So it's equals C10. Lock it in by using F4. Your absolute, your absolute cell addresses, your dollar signs. You press enter and then you can copy C10 down to the other cells as well. The next formula, formula E. Go and calculate the monthly payment. Go and calculate the monthly payment. All right, so we need to, I just need to quickly just introduce you to the following, to the following type of formulas. And these are specific to, these are specific to um, financial calculations. So the first one that we're going to deal with is called a PMT calculation. Whenever you see the words monthly payment, that is, you immediately need to realize that you're going to have to use a PMT calculation. PMT stands for payment calculation all right and then whenever you see the words future value we you should know that you're going to have to use a if if v calculation when you see the words present value in a formula you have to use a equals pv calculation and when you see the words interest rate or when you have to go and work out a specific interest rate you're going to have to use the equals rate calculation now, with that in mind, let's go back to our document. And here we have, if we go to our question paper, it specifies that you have to go and calculate the monthly payment. So that immediately should tell you that I need to go and use a, a PMT calculation. So you put your cursor in the correct cell. You're going to go to formulas. You're going to select financial because we're busy with financial calculations. And in the list, you are going to go and find PMT. In the list. There we go. There's PMT. All right. You're going to click on it so that you can get the function argument box. And in here, students, all that you need to focus on is the three bold parts of your function argument box it's asking you for what is the rate what is the NPR what is the PV here at the bottom of your of your function argument box it actually explains it so rate refers to the interest 
right the NPR if I click on the NPR box it refers to the total number of payments for the loan and the PV is the present value what that means is the following right refers to what is the interest rate all right what is the interest rate number of periods refers to what is the period of the loan the present value refers to what is the loan amount that you are borrowing so just to make it very clear to you guys first of all if we look at our information here we have the loan amount which is 29,439 Rand. We have the annual interest rate of the loan, which is 18%. And we have a period of loan in years, which is four years, five years and six years. But you need to ask yourself the question. The word annual refers to per year. Annual is it happens once a year all right that's what the word annual means and here we also have the period for the loan this is going to be paid back over a period of four years five years and six years so this is in years and this happens also within one year but you have to go and work out a monthly payment so the payments are going to have to happen every month, but you have to use information that is actually set up within a year. So what you must do as students, you'll have to go and slice up your interest rate into months and you have to go and slice up your period of the loan, which is in years. You have to slice up those years also into months. So you're either going to have to divide at some stage and you're going to have to multiply at some stage. So the rate, the first thing that your function argument box is asking you is what is the rate? Well, the rate is 18%, but not per year. I want it to be divided by 12. So you are slicing that 18% up into 12 months. And there's your answer, 0.015. All right, 18% sliced up between 12 months is 0.015%. The number of periods, however, which is four years, you want to slice that up also into months. All right, but this time around, you're going to multiply by 12. And there's your answer. 48 months or four years or 48 months is equal to four years or four years is equal to 48 months all right so that's how you're going to slice that up and when you get your to your present value in other words how much are you borrowing what is the present value of what you are that what of the amount that you want the present value that you are taking from the bank or whoever is 29,439 Rand. All right. That is, that is the, 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 the raw amount that you are taking. So students, just remember when you want to slice up an, an annual interest rate into 12 months, the word annual means year. How many months are there in a year? There's 12 months in a year. That's why we are dividing by 12. And you need to convert four years into months, so you have to multiply by 12. All right, so in a rate gets divided by 12, and a month or a year gets multiplied by 12 to get months. And that's all you have to insert. You don't have to worry about the rest of the FV and the type. You don't put anything in there. You just click on OK. But before you click on OK, students, let's pay attention to our answer. We already have an answer here, but the answer is a negative answer. If I click OK at this stage, get a negative answer. It's in red and there's a minus in front of it. To prevent that, click on your cell, go back to insert function so you can get your function argument box again. And what you want to prevent, you want to just put a minus in front of your PV. And the moment you put the minus there, 
you will notice that your answer the minus then also disappears here and you can click on OK. All right. And it becomes a positive answer. And then you can just copy the formula down. And that's it, students. Let's go to the next formula. The next formula says, formula G, go and calculate the total amount that will be paid over four, sorry, formula F, pardon me, formula F. Calculate the annual payment. Calculate the annual payment. We've distinguished that the word annual means per year or at least once per year over 12 months. So what we're going to now do is, here we have, we have to go and calculate the annual payment. If this amount is the amount that happens every month or once per month, if this is per month, how much is this going to be per year? So it equals this amount multiplied by 12. Why 12? Because there's 12 months in a year. Press enter and copy your formula. Next. Formula G. Go and calculate the total amount that will be paid over four years. They are very specific that it has to be four years. So what you're going to do is here we have four years. We need to go and calculate the total amount that will be paid over four years. So here we have an annual payment that happens once a year or at least over a period of one year. But we want to know how much is this amount over four years. So equals this amount multiplied by four. But we do not want to influence five and six. So we need to lock in the four. How do we lock it in? By using F4 on our keyboard by inserting our dollar sign. So you're locking in the four and then you press enter. And what happens now is you copy the formula and it's only going to apply the, the cell that you locked in. You see there, C18. C18 is applied for, for F18. This, this is, this is, this is C18, all right? So C18 has been applied. Here we go, if you look at the formula over there. Over here, C18 has been applied. And over here, C18 has been applied because we locked it in. Moving on. H, calculate the total interest cost that will be paid. Now let's look at our document. What are they actually asking us here? Students, banks makes money by charging interest to the money that they borrow. For example, if you borrow 10,000 Rand at a bank they, and they charge you 10% on that 10,000 Rand, that means you will have to pay back 10% of 10,000 is 1,000. So that means you'll have to pay back the bank 11,000. You borrowed 10,000, they're charging you an extra 1,000. You need to pay back 11,000, which means that the bank made a profit of 1,000 Rand out of you. That is just an example. So what we now have to do here is we need to distinguish or we need to go and calculate. Remember, we, we work with the interest rate of 18%. So what we now have to go and calculate is how much interest is going to be charged, basically. How much extra are, are, is, is going to be paid? This amount was originally borrowed. This amount is what it's going to eventually cost over four years. How much interest has been charged? So it's basically you have to take this amount and you have to minus it with this amount. You have to take the latest amount and minus it with the original loan amount. So it is equals this amount minus this amount, press enter, and then you copy the formula down. So even though the person borrowed 29,000, but over a period of four years paying back the loan of 29,000, 
they going to actually they actually paid an extra twelve thousand as well back next question formula i go and calculate the future value of saving remember students earlier i said future value is a investment calculation and you're gonna have to use f v whenever you see the word future value so going back to our question here you have a future value projection that needs to happen so let's look at our, our information here we have a monthly amount and please pay attention a monthly amount that is being saved so every month someone is putting away a thousand rand and they are putting this thousand rand away for 48 months period of saving is happening over 48 months so for every single month for the next 48 months the person is putting away a thousand rand but they are investing the, this or the saving this money at an interest rate of six percent annually all right so here we're talking about months and here we're talking about months but here we are talking about an annual interest rate so this happens again once per year so something needs to happen who's the odd one out which one doesn't fit months months year so the year doesn't fit so we'll have to convert or slice this six percent up into 12 months just please pay attention to that so what that means is you put your cursor in the correct cell you go to financial and you go and find if the there we go there's if v and if v's function argument box is asking you what is the interest rate what is the number of periods what is the payment that are you that you are saving students the interest rate is six percent but we're gonna have to slice it up into 12. the number of periods is 48 we don't have to slice anything up because it's already in months it's already 48 months what are you putting away how much are you putting away i'm putting away a thousand rand all right that's how much you are saving pay attention to your answer again there's a negative there's a minus so put a minus in front of your payment amount so that it can be become a positive value click ok and copy your formula and that's financial calculations we've just done at least we've done a few things but the most important ones were the payment calculation which was pmt we did a future value calculation which was if v we did a copy remember it was important to lock in using the f4 amount and we even did a time calculation those were the most important ones amongst amongst everything else thank you so much students for watching and um good luck with your final exam and you are welcome to watch the other videos also in this youtube channel about financial calculations um don't forget you can also find the spreadsheets the one without a formula and the one with the formulas inserted below in the description section of this video as well as the question paper thank you students thank you so much for watching